ambulance services are patient breathing. Every year in Britain, 12 million people dial 999 for an emergency ambulance. More than 3,000 a day in the West Midlands. Right, stop screaming and listen to me. Listen, don't be afraid to push too hard. One and two and three. One and two. CPR in progress. Everyone clear? Each call tells the story of a person in desperate need. You upgraded to a red place who's been badly beaten. Do you know what it was you were stabbed with, Dom? And with call numbers doubling in the last decade. Go in, it's here, the head's here, the head's here, Neely. Yeah. I can't. You can! For our public services, a situation that is now critical. They've got to find somewhere for them. They can't just say there's no beds. Is this literally what you've got, what you're standing up in? Got nothing else? OK. The failure of the system. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. What was he doing? Hey. All right, guys, just, just one minute. Cameras follow cases as they unfold, minute by minute. Two ambulances, please, if possible. OK, yeah, as long as you're all right, I'll get everybody to you as quickly as I can. In the control room... Confirmed life extinct. Oh, man. ..and on the ground... Sorry for your loss. ..as the West Midlands Ambulance Service race to save lives. They are coming to you, blue lights and sirens, as fast as they possibly can. If you're breathing... Can you see the helicopter? Well, you're no trouble, honestly. Everybody needs help sometimes, don't they? This is the story behind the silence. Get out of the way. I'm driving. I had to go. I had to go take away again this morning. You've had McDonald's again. Yeah, it's trouble is I pass it on the way to work. In the black country, paramedics Justin and Dawn are beginning a 12-hour shift. I'm going to have chicken crisps for my breakfast. Or mango pieces. <laughs> <laughs> chicken crisps or mango pieces. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Ambulance service, how can I help you? Hi, it's a wife at Newcastle Hospital. I've got a patient on the phone who's pushing. We won't get a midwife out to her, so I need to send um, an ambulance, please. Five G. This patient has uh, the urge to push. Her waters have broken. Waters have broken and urge to push. <laughs> oh yes, we're gonna have a baby. If it's an urge to push, then we have to send two crews, uh, one for the mother and one for the baby. And it is a third baby, so it might be quick. Justin and Dawn are five minutes away. Another crew are a minute ahead of them. We're not far now, are we? I don't like delivering babies. You love it, it's your favourite job. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not messy. That's why but, I don't like it. But it's, it's beautiful. I've delivered nine babies, and it's a, it's a real exciting time. Take this as well. You hope that things are facing the right way, you know, you hope that you see the head first, you hope the cord's not wrapped around the neck. <laughs> Whether you want to wait or not, it's coming, it's cooked, it's ready. So, How are we doing? What's going on there? Water's broken, it's it's feeling, third, feeling pressure. <laughs> it's coming. Shall we have a little look? Do you want to put your knees on the floor? OK, that's fine. Hmm? Oi, something coming. Don't worry, don't worry. Just try and breathe nice and slowly. OK, OK, OK. OK, just relax. Push. Deep breath. That's OK, that's it. Breathe slowly. Tell her to breathe slowly for me. Slow, deep breath. OK, head's out now. OK, keep breathing. I can't quite clear the cord yet. Keep breathing. Breathe. Okay. Do you need to push yet? We need to, to get this baby out now. I've got the cord. OK, we need to... She's, um... Check the airway. OK, are you ready? I've got the cord. Good. I oh, won't stop it. Good, 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 good. Well done, well done. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go. Baby's out. OK. 
Well done, you've got a baby boy. OK, all right. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yes, it's so quick. Yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> it's OK. It's pinked up lovely, hasn't he? Oh, yes, I like it. Yes, we've got somebody to meet you here. Oh, my God. Come on, have a hug of your baby. He's so small. <laughs> <laughs> my baby. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. What are you going to call him? Arian. Arian? Yeah. Beautiful. Hello, Arian. Have you seen your baby? You come down here, never, have a hug. I never believe it like this in home. At home and so fast. See? We always make plans, but they never turn out the way. So small. He is. We're going to go to the hospital and just get him checked over, make sure everything else is OK. Sorry. I can't believe it. It does. It happens that quickly. It's beautiful. That cry, that birth cry, is just the best sound ever. Having that baby, bringing it into the world, is, is amazing. 5 2, go ahead, over. 5 2, yeah, we're delayed on scene there. We've delivered this baby. Um, we're just trying to sort Mum out, get her cleaned up and uh, ready to move. Uh, yeah, congratulations, that's received. Uh, is it a girl or a boy? Oh, it's a little boy, healthy, everything's the way it should be. Yeah, they're not naming them after me, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's a little Orian. Over. OK, Dad. Have your beautiful boy. I was a butcher before this. I left school into butchery, so it's nice to work on live people and, you know... <laughs> When I first started, it was quite a shock, but it made me feel some kind of self-worth that I've never felt before. People rely on you. And that's when I realised that this job was for me. Well done. Saturday. And by mid-afternoon, the control room is receiving 160 calls an hour. Ambulance service and the patient breathing. Yes. <coughs> he's weaned blood. At the moment, he's having big clots of blood come out. No worries. What's the address of the emergency? In Dudley, a 54-year-old patient is making her fourth 999 call of the day. Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Yes, it's for myself, please. OK, what's the reason for the call? I think I've got a virus. So... You just think you you come down with the virus? I think I have, yes. Because what I thought it was on 111, yes. Sorry, so I'm interrupting. It's just I'll get worse talk about it. It's not worrying, I worry a lot. OK. And what's your name? Josephine. Josephine. Justin and Dawn are the nearest available crew. Oh, we're going to Josephine? No. It is, it's Josephine. No. Yeah. I've been out to Josephine before and she felt dizzy and I think she's had a jangly heart before now. She's a lovely lady, though. She's switched on in many respects, but I think that she is a bit lonely. I hope she's OK, actually, and it is just a bit of reassurance as much as anything. Beautiful. Josephine, it's the ambulance. Thank you. Oh, bless her. <laughs> Josephine lives alone, but has daily support from carers. Have you recovered from the upset stomach, Josephine? No, I'm still feeling good. That's why I said that's why I found one, one, one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if no. we can give you some reassurance, then we will, yes, won't we? It, yeah. I was just worried about this book. There's uh, loads of things going around. Isn't there, there are, and you've obviously got a little bit of a 24-hour thing, most yeah. likely. When you're thinking about moving, we'll have to well, give you any dates. Well, it's July. All oh, right, so quite soon, then. Yes, it's supported accommodation, you know, one of them oh, ones. Like, I think it's like a uh, warden-controlled sort of, it, yeah. yeah. one of them. Joe, yeah. you'll, you'll love it there. That's what I said. I like to mix with anybody, so yeah. you not can do. You, you know, don't like, try and hit us or get yeah. drunk, you know, yeah. No, 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 I've still got the baby shot. I still want a bottle of wine and that there. The you got some and that. baby shot? Babs, I've had it tied it in the fridge, yeah. I haven't opened it. Joe will crack open the baby shot, then. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you'll have a tipsy of that. Yeah. <laughs> so were your party good? Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, yes, it was called the 60th birthday party. Did you have a dance? Well, we were doing the karaoke. Oh, and well, I was singing karaoke. Shout, you, know, you want to shout, 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 right. you know, and I was making my own version. Did you know about the dancing? I teach them how to do rock and roll. We know that one when they do side, 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 back, back, back. Well, Show me. Let's do that. Do we ride for first time? One, two, then do we do a back three. I used to think that we should be dealing with very urgent or emergency cases only. Serious hemorrhages or heart attack, you know, that kind of thing. I believe that we shouldn't go to these frequent callers and this was waste of our time. Hey! I was nearly there, I was nearly there. But people still need that help. And there's nobody else to call. Well, apart from a little bit of a fever, Next you're going to be all right. Be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Next time I come, you'll have to teach me a new one. That's it, Joe. I'm going to have you. I'm going to hold you to that every time yeah. I come and see you. Bye, Josephine. See you. Bye. She always sends us a card and chocolates for Christmas, doesn't she? She does, and it makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> if you live on your own and you think there's something wrong with yourself. It must just create such a massive sort of snowball in your head until you think, oh, I need this sort, you know, I need to I need know. help, yeah. Social support is underrated, isn't it, really? And that's what we do a lot of the time. Quite a lot of it is social support now, I think. Social workers with first aid skills. Justin and Dawn are available to treat their next patient. In the control room, it's time for a shift change. Um, Josephine, we've been out to her today. Um, cleared about an hour ago. So we've had three calls in right, okay. 15 hours. Roger, so. thank you. She should be okay for a while, uh, but I would imagine she is going to call again tonight. In the first hour of the new shift, the control room takes 172 calls. Hello, ambulance service. Is patient breathing? Uh, yes. Is patient conscious? Yes. I think she um, hit her foot on, on like the bedpost. She doesn't want to waste her time, but she's concerned about her foot now. Right, OK. Ambulance serves is the patient breathing. Well, I don't know. No, he's not. Okay. He's just been sat here watching television. He's on his back and his tongue's come out. Right, we're coming as quickly as we can. Your service is the patient Hello. Breathing. Thank you for breathing. I can't catch my breathing. Take your time, OK? What's your name, please? Josephine. 4453. Control to 4453, uh, Trevor 9443, uh, category 2. Uh, it's to our regular patient, uh, Josephine, I believe you've already tendered the today, over. <laughs> Roger, that's all received. Uh, we'll look after her. Thank you. Stand by. I'm not sure I'm going to encourage you to dance this time. I wanted to see how she was on her feet, really, the last time, and she... Um, there was no problem. There was no problem and no dizziness. I think we need to keep this one quite short and sweet. Oh, great. Explain that we are busy tonight, being a Saturday. As Justin and Dawn make their way to Josephine's flat, she calls 999 again, her sixth call of the day. Ambulance, sir. Oh, really? Take a breather. I think one's on the way, I'm not turning. No, he's the patient I'm breathing. He's the patient breathing. He's not breathing for me. I'm panicking, I'm a panic attack. Oh, and my head spinning. <laughs> uh, and you say the ambulance isn't there? I can right. hear them. Yes. OK, I'll leave you with them then, OK? Thank you. Are you on the floor? Oh. Off the floor. <coughs> Has your carer been? Yeah. We're going to just check you over again, Josephine. Yes, Josephine. But... I can't catch your breath. I've got dizzy spells. All right. Listen, if everything's all right, though, we must dash because we're very busy tonight. Okay. You look a nice colour. Let's check your temperature, check. All right. I'm going to have a little listen to your breathing, all right, while we just check your heart. Jo, your blood pressure's like a 25-year-old. I don't think there's enough resources. I don't think there's enough 
mental health support in the community. Chest nice and clear, good breath sounds, equal. You know, as soon as the evening comes, a lot of these services drop off. You'll be all right. Mainly because I worry too much of them, though. Joe, I think you need to go get yourself in bed, rest yeah. up, get a, get a sleep. Yeah, come on then, let's go to bed. How's that? Better? We've took it on board as the ambulance will pick up the shortfall until the GP opens again in the morning or the social workers or such like. Sleep well. All right, you take care. Bye then, Joe. Every year the demand is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know. It isn't ideal and it definitely isn't sustainable. 453, go ahead. This will be a VNR, I'm just doing the paperwork at the moment. The patient was a bit anxious but doesn't seem to have any priority symptoms. A vehicle is not required to take Josephine to hospital. Of the 151 times she's called in the past three months, the ambulance has only been used three times to take her for checks. Uh, 4453, that's all received. Um, thanks for the update there. Another life saved. Ambulance services. Is the patient breathing? He's very intoxicated. He can't talk. Okay. Um, he can't stand up. Is he responding to you when you talk to him? He is responding. He is. Um, very, very slow. Less than a mile from Josephine's flat, Justin and Dawn's next job comes in. Too intoxicated to talk. Can't even say his name. I like Josephine. I don't like drunk patients. Everybody needs us for different reasons. That's not police, that's security. Security. No. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling all right. Shall we get it? You've had a bit to drink, haven't you? No, I need to... Uh... Have you banged your mouth? The gentleman saw you fall over. Shall we get you on our chair and have a look at you? <laughs> Darling, I love you, darling. Thank you. It's very and cold. I love you, sir, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been drinking tonight? Sharab? Sharab Pinda? Sharab Pinda! Sharab Pinda! Sharab Pinda! Hey, Desi! Desi, go ahead, huh? No, I can speak Punjabi in Punjabi. Just get him up. That's it. Have a walk with us, young man. Come on. This way. Have a seat in the warm with this blanket. That's it. I worked at an Indian restaurant for about a year, and they didn't teach me anything apart from, you're a fabulous dancer, <laughs> because I wanted to tell this Indian girl that I really liked that she was a really good dancer. So I learned that. Bahad, bahad, Sony, Okay, have a seat down. There you go. Have a seat on there. Yeah, sit him on there. I don't think. Lovely. That's it, yes. When I did this job, I found that we had a lot of isolated Punjabi-speaking community, and and I just felt that I couldn't even say, "Don't worry, you know, it's going to be okay, or we're here to help you." So I got a CD and a book, and uh, started to learn it. Sir, can you give me some alcohol, please? Some alcohol? Yes. <laughs> you, I... uh, we don't tend to carry that on our ambulance. Justin, you are a good person. Yeah, and you are too. And and I am going to walk away from here. All right. Five four five three. Do now go ahead there. Yes, five three. This intoxicated gentleman had had a fall. He's got no injuries. Are you all okay after that one, then, Heather? Yeah, we've got one or another. <laughs> <laughs> Ambulance service is the patient breathing. Okay, what's the reason for the call? 
And was there any pain in your chest or upper back just before the fit? You don't remember? No. A 999 call is in progress from one of the ambulance service's most prolific callers, Leon. Are you still fitting now? Yeah. yeah. He's called four times today, saying he's having an epileptic fit. Richard is the controller dispatching ambulances in his area tonight. He'll call, tell us he's had a fit, and then he'll put it down again, and then we have to ring him back. And then by the time we've tried to call him back, he's back on the phone again to us, telling us about the fit, and then puts the phone down again. So it's a lot of to and fro really. Paramedic crew Danny and Kieran have just booked on shift and are the closest available crew to his house. Yeah, good evening. It's uh, Henna and Prosser. Would they like for you to come on? Uh, we have got Leon back on. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what? what's the go with the police these days, then? Because I know that last time he tried to... Uh, s well, he did stab his cow, didn't he? I've never been to him. You've never been to him? No. I think you're the only person in the whole of the ambulance service. Has a man. Leon has a brain injury which affects his behaviour. He's one of 50 people in the West Midlands who need police to accompany an ambulance every time they attend. You're right, mate. How are you doing? Hi, guys. You've been here yeah, before, yeah? Yeah. Leon, I'm coming in there. Okay, Clark. I've got the ambulance. You're right, mate. How are you feeling, mate? Not very well. What's been happening? I take the epilepsy medication. Hmm. So have you got have you got enough medication to keep you going? Look behind me. Where are they? But there are they. Can I grab them? Can I have a look? Have a look. Thank you, mate. All right. They're all empty. What's in there? It's empty. There's one Wait. in there. Just one. Is that the last one? Yes, it's the last. Where's the others? Is there none more? <laughs> what, when are your carers due next? They see in the morning. Would they, bring, would, they ha would they bring you more medication in the morning? No, that's what I'm saying. I'll say. Can right. I use your finger to do where, where would they, where would, Where does it come? Does it get delivered to you or...? Mm. No. No one's bringing it. Right. Leon was more mobile until two years ago when he suffered a stroke. He's assisted by carers who visit several times a day, even if he often refuses their help. Could you do me a favour? Yeah. Have a look if there's any mouldy. It's all mouldy, Leon. There's fruit that's mouldy, there's rice and there's butter, and that's it. Do you get do you get many visitors apart from the carers and the ambulance? No, I don't. No. Oh bed. I stay in the house twenty four hours. That must be tough. Really? Yeah. Have a look over there. On the photo. Is that you? That's me. We all got a little boy. We I'm going in this room. I'm very sick. You don't appreciate what you got until you come. With only enough medication to last till morning, Kieran and Danny must decide the most efficient way to replenish Leon's supply. So, what's the plan? Yeah, what's the plan, Leon? What are we going to do with you today? If we ring 111 and get the doctor to call you and have a chat with you about your medication. I won't need to wait for five fucking hours for two pound weeks to come and talk 111. We're just trying to suggest ideas. We're trying to avoid the A&E because it's not really an emergency, we would hope in someone would be able to sort well, it for you. See. What will happen if we don't take you, Leon? I'll probably have a and die. 
Ender. He's gonna keep calling back. Let's just take a minute, because he's got no medication. He's only got the morning, isn't he? Okay. If that's what you want, we'll take you. Something needs put in place so this doesn't keep happening because it's not really appropriate, is it? No, this can't be happening weekly, surely. If we don't take him into hospital now like he wants to go, what's going to happen? Is he going to keep calling for us? At what point is, do we... It? Does someone just give in and take him? We're going to be hating our hospital for this, aren't we? Pretty much. But what can we do? I don't deny for a second that Leon does have a problem, but I don't think a frontline emergency ambulance is, is set to deal with that problem because there's so much more going on. Especially when it's not just once a day, when it's twice, when it's three times, when it's four times a day. We can't help other people at the same time. It's the same old wheel though, isn't it, for him? Same old wheel. I don't think he'll ring again. He'll, if he's discharged, he'll just go home and... and... That'll be it till tomorrow. I hope. <laughs> it's a normal weekday shift, but by mid-afternoon, the control room is receiving over 200 calls an hour, nearly 20% more than usual. <laughs> My chest hurts. Your chest hurts. And listen to me carefully, sweetheart. I'm arranging help, but you are breathing very fast, and it's making it worse. <laughs> Background crying. Yeah, that's right. Do you know what she's saying? She's taking ibuprofen and calcium the morning. It's painkillers, but you don't know how many, or do you? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how many. Help's no, been please. arranged on this call. We are experiencing extremely high demand at the moment, but we will be with her as quickly as possible. In Perry Bar, a doctor's surgery is chasing a request for a non-emergency transfer to hospital, first made five hours ago. She needs to be admitted. And um, we're just wondering, if I've got the daughter on the phone now, just wondering how long that will actually be, the wait. We have got the help organised. We are extremely busy at the moment. I wouldn't be able to give a time, I'm afraid. But we will be there as soon as we can. 4452. Yeah, 4452 and 39 It's an upgrade of an urgent removal. Patient was booked for sample uh, casualty. Receipt number. Yeah, that's all received, over. Ah, oh, gee. Paramedics Natalie and Nat are the third crew to have been dispatched to the 82-year-old today. The first two were diverted to more serious cases. Cheers. Cheers. Me dears. Cheers. Me dears. The patient, Jean, and her daughters have been waiting six hours. If we know a patient's stable, unfortunately, those cases do come lower down the list. No, I'm not a... No! Oh, 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 oh. oh. I can't watch. It is heartbreaking. It's that family's emergency. Somebody they love is going into hospital, but that's just how it is. We have to prioritise. It's an emergency service, we have to. Who have we come to see, darling? Mom, Your mum. OK. Hello. Hello, is it Jean? Hello. Hello, Jean. Are you in any pain, no? Do you mind if I just have a little look at your tummy and have a little listen? Is that be OK? That's fine. The GP is concerned about a swelling in Jean's stomach and wants her taken to hospital for tests. So your daughter said that you use a hoist? Yeah, but that's the only way you can get me in anywhere. OK. Why do you use a hoist? I can't walk. What no, happened no. This, this time last year, she went into hospital. Uh -huh. She's got bad on her legs over the last few years anyway. And basically, when they tried to get her, just, her legs had seized up. OK. So is, can she stand on her feet no. at all? No, no, she can't stand no, in... Well, she's got the hoist on her now. She sits on it all day, yeah, so the bed just... Yeah. 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 You're fed up, eh? You're fed up. Oh, yeah. You look fed up. It's understandable, it's really, isn't it? Cos we just worried, we eight people get me in and out. Yeah. It's so awkward. We'll look after you, don't you worry. Do 
they normally get you out on a stretcher or a chair? No, we hoist. We're just thinking when we've got you in your hoist, we need to either pop you on our stretcher... Yeah. ..to pop you into the ambulance. Well, how are you going to get the stretcher? Well, let me just have a look. Is there a ramp? No. I'm not going to be able to get the stretcher. You're not? There's two steps. Oh, no, it's not going to go over there, is no. it? No. We can't lift her. Me and you can't now lift her. We struggle. So what are we going to do? I don't know whether... We could move that. How do you take Mum out of this house? Yeah, she hasn't been out for two years. I can't get out the house. Oh, no, sweetheart. No, darling, don't worry. Yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. be the yeah. performance. Listen, listen, listen out. it's no performance. No, no. All we've got to do is work out the safest way to get you out. Oh, That's God. all. Oh, we, no, can. we can. We can. Just get an extra pair of hands and we're done. Simple. It's fine. Don't you worry. We're just, fine. we're just thinking about the best way. That's all. Of course it can be done. Our job is to get you to hospital safe and sound, and that's what we're going to do. We asked about a ramp here. A ramp would have been great. Yeah, it'd be fair, it wouldn't it? Okay, our social services said no, and they wouldn't do it. Oh. So we have to pack. Four, four, five, two. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks. Can we have um, another vehicle, please? We need an additional set of hands uh, just to assist this patient out of the property, please, have I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Eva. While Natalie and Nat wait for help from an ambulance in their area, on the other side of Birmingham, crewmates Corrie and Mick have just become free. Oh. Yay! Yay. <clears throat> the Notorious, he's a character. <clears throat> he's Leon. 4450, thank you. Confirming police are now en route to this detail as of about three minutes ago. Uh, I still advised to stand by and await police attendance. I'll let you know when they are there. Richard has already sent four ambulances to frequent caller Leon today, but a crew is yet to enter his home because the police have been inundated with higher priority calls and so are unable to accompany them. Did he actually stab a carer? The, well, the, the story is that he stabbed a carer. He's always really nice to us. Oh, yeah. And he's really intelligent. He's, oh, yeah. he's fluent in, like, Latin, Spanish, French. If you sit and have a, talk, a, 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 like, a genuine, sensible conversation with him, he's really intelligent. We went on Christmas Eve, didn't we? It yeah. was our last job on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. um, and he tried to give us a bottle of wine. <laughs> I made him, a, made him a sandwich. Yeah, I cleaned his flat a bit. You cleaned his flat up a little bit. <clears throat> However, that's not what we're here to do. Dad, Dad. Yeah, cheers, baby. We landed outside Leon's uh, waiting police, over. Thank you, Whiskey Michael. No, Jules, you're free. Police on 2207, please. In the control room, Team 3 has received 79 high-priority calls in the last 40 minutes. Come on, man. And in Leon's area, it's particularly busy. And what's the emergency here? They've got a three-year-old going lethargic. He is breathing. Yeah. Conscious. Conscious, yes. He went under the water. Unknown amount of time under the water. It's shocked to got him out, but we don't know how long he was under. And he's now sleeping. Yeah, 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 they need us. Patients in other areas need us, but we've got a, a crew just sitting there and it just it's just not good. It's just not good. Oh, what's happened? He's, he's got a grade four brain tumour and he's just having a seizure and panicking a bit. It's all right, sweetheart. I've got to sleep with They're coming with the blue lights and phones on so as fast as they can, OK? As the highest priority, an ambulance is immediately dispatched to the fitting patient. But three miles away, Natalie and Nat have been waiting for control to send another crew to help for 40 minutes. No offence, but every time paramedics come, they're always nice-looking blokes. Yeah, no. Really? Oh, God. Who do you well, used to have... <laughs> Sorry, you've got us. <laughs> I need to go out. I used to have one of them. I need to get out. <laughs> Is that the other crew? Oh. The muscle is coming. Hello, hello. We Hi, haven't yeah. either. Oh, hello. Yeah. Are so, you yeah. strong? Are you strong? I do go to the gym, so... She's had Absolute. four shredded wheat today. Now, I'm sure I've seen this lady before. Oh? Well. Oh, I've been up here before. Yes, yeah. I've seen this lady before. Oh, another one as well. Yes. Look. Oh. Like a mother's meeting, ain't it? Absolutely. Don't you worry. Lots of time we go to family and they'll say, if we had a wheelchair, 
if we had a ramp, if we had this, we'd have booked a taxi and we'd have taken them. I told you I was right. It's the grey one. No, 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 no,
Ooh, we I couldn't remember what was on the telly, could we? I don't know, but I bought a DVD last night. I could watch that when you're home. Oh, Pitch Perfect too. OK. I've got a Korean zombie film called Train to Busan. <laughs> it's in the charts, man. Is it? Yeah. What charts, though? The, the, it was an Asda. <laughs> Is the singing and dancing in it? There's definitely some biting in it. I think it's a fairly safe bet. I don't get the whole zombie thing, I yeah. don't. If I wanted to see bits of hanging off people, I'd just come to work. <laughs> <laughs> we always kind of look back at the end of our day and say, you know, what have we done today? Is there anybody who we've really helped? Sometimes we can do a 12-hour shift and not have used one single bit of kit. We're there to help genuinely ill people. It's just frustrating. I'm in the service of the patient breathing. Yes, what's about? Oh, are you the patient? Yes. What's your name? Joseph. All right, then Joseph will be with you soon. OK, thank you. Twelve hours later, both Richard in the control room and the crews on the ground are back on shift. Ambulance service, hi, please. Hi, Amber. Can we pass you a job, please? Yeah. Um, we've got a possible deceased now. He hasn't been seen for two weeks, and there is a very strong smell coming from the location. Oh. Uh. 450. I've sent you case 709. Uh, the patient's not been seen for two weeks. Strong smell coming from inside the property. Oh, God! That's fabulous. Thank you very much. Oh, my days. Unmistakable smell. Is it? Box. it is, yeah. isn't it? It is. With call volume returned to normal, police are able to attend immediately to break in. Police are now in attendance. Right, all the same, thanks for the update. Hello, police. Oh, sweet Jesus. Mm. He's in here on the uh, oh. Oh, Oh, dear. I'm off. I don't do I don't do smiles anyway. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, it's not very really nice. People always say, oh, you know, you really must, you must see some sights, you must see some terrible sights. Last year, I had a couple of really rough jobs, literally one after the other. I went to a woman who um, was 27 weeks pregnant. She was a heroin addict. She'd given birth to this, this baby, but this baby had been dead inside for quite some time. And then I went to an overdose. And I remember thinking, somewhere her mum and dad are at home and someone's going to knock on the door and say, your daughter's taken her own life. I am quite tough, but they just broke me. I had to have time off work. I'm going to have to go for counselling. It's not always the, the big thing. It's not always the huge road traffic accidents. It's something that you just think, oh, my goodness, those people, their lives are never going to be the same again. It's, it's, it's just very sad. It's very sad that someone can be lying dead in a flat for potentially two, three weeks, and the only person that notices is the cleaner of the block of flats because there's a funny smell coming from your flat. No, no one's reported him missing, no one's reported not seeing him. No one cares, really. Yeah, no one seems to care. Bless. What's the reason for the call? It's so pain in my chest. Have you ever had a heart attack? 
No, never. That's what I think you might be. What's your name? Josephine. I'm sorry, what's the reason for the call? I'm a carer and I've come in and I've found her with her medication that she's not supposed to have. There's tablets missing, I don't know if she's taken them, I'll find some on the floor. But one woman told me to call the ambulance because they're busy. Pretty busy as well. OK, keep a look out for the crew. 82-year-old Iris, who may have taken an accidental overdose, is in West Bromwich. Hannah and Tony are the nearest available ambulance crew. Iris, hello, my darling. Are you OK? <laughs> Look at his hair, little. Do <laughs> <laughs> you like it? Feel it? <laughs> Got some jelly in it? Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> do you remember taking these tablets? No. No. What are we going to do with you? Oh, yeah, shoot me. I don't know. Iris's carer spotted the missing tablets when she came on shift this morning. But Saturday's missing. Sunday is missing. Midday's missing. That's missing. That's missing. I don't know if she's taking them or not. You've got to be careful in future what tablets you're taking. All right. Do your carers give you your tablets, get your, get your tablets out for you normally? Uh, they have done, yes. You should let them do that. Right. Keep your tablets out of the way. We'll put them back up on top of the wardrobe where they're normally kept. Tony and Hannah don't know if the dose of medication Iris has taken is harmful, so they must treat it as a potential overdose. We're talking to some experts, my colleagues outside doing it now. Yes, yes. So they can tell us if what you've took is dangerous or if you need to go to hospital. Oh, that's a good idea. If they say it could be dangerous yes, having that, then course. you'll come with us, won't you? Of course. We'll wait to see what they say then. Everything looks good on here. Hi. Hannah's just here. What are they saying? What is that tablet? Fantastic. All right, perfect. Thanks very much for your help. Excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye. No harm. Oh, I thought not. <coughs> Iris. Ah, uh, yeah. Absolutely fine, the tablet you've taken. It won't cause you any more harm. Somebody smells lovely. Is it you? I had a wash a couple of weeks ago. It might be that. Could be. Could be. Thinks he's everybody with his head on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shave it off next time I come back. No. I need to make you a sandwich. I'll make you a sandwich if you want. You go down and see what's there. And... Put something together. Yeah. I can do that. That's a good girl. How long have you lived here for? Sixty years. Sixty years. Uh -huh. Is it? Did you know yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was, was you married then? Yes. So your husband used to live here with you then? Yes, love. Yes. yes. How long has he been passed away for? About four years. Bless you. But I really deal with me. Yeah. Inside. Do you realise that? I know what you're saying. Oh, you do, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying. I do. Good. Yes. Well, that's a good thing. It gives you a bit of comfort as well, I bet. Yes, love. Yes. She's doing me a piece, isn't she? She's doing you a piece, yeah. So she's doing me sandwiches and she. It's a piece, isn't it? I'm from West Brom. I'm from West Brom as well, Bab. <laughs> you always lived in West Brom, ain't you? Yeah. yeah. You are. Lovely lad. Thanks. I'm sure my mum would be proud of you said that. I'm sure she ought to be proud of you. Yeah, that looks nice. Right. Fresh and then you got your sandwich and you got your cuppa. Mm, and the tablets that you've took ain't gonna do you no harm at all. Mm. Your doctor's gonna ring you. Yeah. So we may as well clear off then, aren't we? I'm Enjoy your sandwich, Bab. Take care. Okay. No problem. You was gonna kiss my hand then, weren't you? I know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you've all been wonderful. It's lovely meeting you, Iris. Take care, sweetheart. Cheerio. Ambulance services, patient breathing. I'm the patient. You're the patient. Okay, what's happened there? Oh, Rich, we've got Leon back on. Have we? We 
we have? Leon has been home from hospital for eight and a half hours. He's going to give me nightmares, this bloke is. Go ahead. Trouble four nine five. We've got Leon on. Um, everybody's ready to go if you are ever. Uh, yeah, we're ready to go. You can clear us and send us that if you want. Thank you. I'll start going as we know the way. <laughs> He's ringing every single day. And we've got to go because that one time that we possibly don't, it could be serious. You're free, Al. Mental health cars going up to Leon. Yeah, I just saw that. Um, apparently, there's a new agreement in place. They're going to go one time only. Mental health cars going, Joe, to assist as police assistance. Right, OK. To avoid the delays of yesterday, the mental health car with a police officer on board has been dispatched to accompany the crew. A paramedic officer is also en route to help. Darren and Mel are the 274th ambulance crew to have been dispatched to Leon in the past three months. The other day, I got called to him twice within two hours. He'd already been left at home, being safe. Then, after 10 minutes after the crew left, he rang back. Yeah. So another ambulance was put back on, and he had a further eight that day, followed by the next day, he had another eight ambulances. I mean, I am. And he is, oh, what are you doing? Come on, come on, you need to use your head, please, come on. But then one day, he'll catch someone off guard, then he'll be ill, and no one will believe him. Yeah. Years ago, an ambulance was only used for literally life threatening emergencies, wasn't it? I've never called an ambulance. Within 13 minutes, the ambulance crew, mental health team and paramedic officer Chris have all arrived on scene. Leon? Hi, mate. How are you today? So, shall we check you over then, Leon? Yeah. Okie dokie. Leon has called today because he says he's had an epileptic fit, the reason he gives every time he calls. Okay, how are you feeling now, Leon? God, a pounding headache. OK. You always have a banging headache afterwards, don't you, Leon? And you remember all of it, do you? I remember coming out of it. OK. Have you had something to eat? No. No? Do you want a cup of tea or anything, Leon? Yeah. Are you getting on better with your carers now, Leon? My carers are here to do a job. OK. Did you want that cup of tea? So it's not an emergency. Oh, we know. We, we all know it's not an emergency. But we've got to pretend, haven't we? Last year, the mental health team assessed Leon and found there were no mental health issues behind his frequent calling. There's something more required here. Looking at his situation, we have a man who is socially isolated with disability. Yeah. Is that package of care enough? If you were lying there all day, yeah. no stimulation, care is coming, <coughs> cup of tea, bite a week. What a life. But the problem is, he is aggressive to his carers, so they're not really wanting to be here for him, are they now? And he has had his carers changed a lot of times. So everything, up to, it's 2015, just, it's go, it's, up to 2015, he had 21 different carers. It's going round in a vicious circle, and, and yet we're is, getting used for it to do sort of this. In a better facility that could meet his needs. But he can, he can refuse that, though, can't he? Which he is. There you go. Because he's got capacity. Is this a social need crisis? I would say yes. So who do we need to get out to social sort Social services. It? OK. After 50 minutes on scene, the mental health team are stood down, leaving the crew and paramedic manager Chris to finish assessing Leon. So, Leon, all your observations are absolutely fine. I don't think there's any medical reason for you to go to hospital today. I All right, Liam, but unfortunately, we can't just take you to hospital because you might have a seizure. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just wait and let me talk. OK. Leon, at the moment, your observations are fine. OK? We can't just take people in just in case. We turn up... So do we shut up? Save the dust. Do you want that? 
Each one of these heart monitoring pads has been given to Leon by ambulance staff on previous call outs. Take care, Leon. Thank you. All right. You guys are right? Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm fine. Can I have a hug? As long as you guys are all right, then. Yes, thanks, Chris. I don't think the emergency service was originally designed to deal with so much social and mental health care. But there's nobody else to provide that care. And I'm quite glad to do that. I'm glad to be a human to somebody, you know, when they've got nobody else to turn to. I think the term emergency service is, is the wrong term, isn't it? I don't know what the service is anymore, in a sense. I don't know what we can label ourselves as. We're sort of a jack of all trades, you know. <laughs> and the snow is falling thick and fast. We were bombing down those fields. There was palm tree debris everywhere. And a Roman colosseum. Isn't it boring when I talk about my dreams? Next on Ambulance. Do you need an ambulance? Yeah, I'm gonna die. Is that... <laughs> I need to know, was somebody not breathing or are you just messing about now? This could possibly be a hoax call. 